What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be comparing and contrasting some high school wide receiver route running to some NFL wide receiver route running. We're going to be talking about the mistakes that high school wide receivers make and talk about how NFL wide receivers never make these mistakes. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver and would like a full eight-week daily gym and on-field workout schedule, check out that very first link in the description below for our ultimate eight-week wide receiver workout plan. It's 500-plus wide receiver drills and gym exercises all broken down with sets and reps for you. So again, very first link in that description below. Let's get started with this video. So this is going to be a bad example of a router from a high school wide receiver running a comeback and showing a um, pretty good example for all you wide receivers out there of what not to do at the break point in terms of an indicator. So off the line of scrimmage against like, you know, a DB who looks like he's going to be real physical, jam, weight is distributed on the ball of his foot. So it looks like he's going to lunge at us. This wide receiver does a great job of using this split release, freezing this DB and creating some space. Now leading up into the route, he does a great job selling vertical. He's running with good pad level, good stride, good speed. Everybody knows to do that before their breaks because we're trying to make this DB think we're running what? A fade, right? Everything's a fade until it is not a fade. Now, a disciplined DB is going to have his eyes where? His eyes are going to be on my hips as a wide receiver. He's going to be reading my body language. He's kind of reading my speed as well, but that's more of like a feel thing. Like he's feeling my speed. If he feels me change speed, then he's going to change speed. But if he sees my body language change, me throw my hand up in the air, me raise my chest up, that is a dead indicator that I'm about to make this break. So you see how this wide receiver, before he snaps down, you see how he reaches out with this cut leg, his chest pops up in the air, his chin pops up in the air, and his hand pops up in the air. Everything about this right here looks like he's going to make a break. It is not selling fade. And before that foot even gets down, that pad level raises up. Now, I get why he's doing it. He's swinging this hand up in the air. He's raising up his chin and his chest so he can get low on the break point. So he could change levels and drop his hips. Because the only way that you're able to decelerate while running full speed is by dropping your hips violently, putting on the brakes. Now, that's just an indicator to the DB, though, because we did a little bit too much. We can't raise up to come down. We just have to trust my hips and we just have to drop right now. So let's play this thing full speed one more time. Then we're going to show a pro example of how you guys can avoid this. Because again, the whole purpose of this video, you guys, is just to get you guys out of these bad habits. Because these are not just bad habits that these receivers in this video have. These are bad habits that thousands upon thousands of wide receivers that we see, that we have worked with at one point or another, and that we just know have these bad habits. So this is how you can break these habits and what you should be thinking about to break these habits throughout the course of this video because we got more examples coming your way. So now let's look at this route here from John Dotson and he's going to be running a stop route. Now different route, but it's the same type of break, right? He's still dropping his hips. It's more like a curl route actually coming back to the ball. It'd be the same type of break on a comeback and it is man-to-man -man coverage. Now a DB in the NFL is a lot better than a high school DB. So that's why these guys have to be so precise with what they're doing because any little detail, any little change in their body language, their speed, their stride, will tell this DB that they're about to make a break. So let's watch Dodson here. So he comes off the ball, pushes vertical, drops right on a dime. There is zero in, there are zero indicators before that break. So let's watch what he does here. Again, same pad level, same stride, and same speed as the last example. But one of these routes worked and one of the routes didn't, and it has to do with the break point. So right before the break point, you see nothing changes. There's no change in his chin. He's not reaching with his feet. He is just dropping right in stride. He is trusting his hips. He is bringing that chin to his knee. It's just like somebody's got a string attached to his chin. They don't pull the string up then pull it down. They just pull the string straight down. They take that string and his chin goes straight to his knee. He changes levels. That is what we want to try to do on any single break where I have to drop my hips. Because that DB has no idea of knowing. DB is one of the hardest positions on the field because they have no idea when we are going to make a break and if, if we don't tell them. At the end of the day as a wide receiver, it's not about what the DB does right. It's about what we do wrong to give it away. I honestly think there is no such thing as great coverage or perfect coverage. I really believe that it's either a bad route or a good route. 
and the bad route makes the DB look good. Because you got to understand, it's so hard for this guy if we do everything right, if we put the brakes on, if we eliminate extra steps, and if we can sell this thing, there's pretty much nothing he could do. And this isn't like he broke his ankles. It's still decently tight coverage, but those little details make all the difference. So fellas, don't think of it like you have to raise up to go down. Don't reach with your cuts. All I need from you guys is to sit your butt down like you were sitting into a chair as quick as you can, like you're playing musical chairs and the music stops. And then you got a string attached to your chin. You don't pull up with the string, then go down. That string just pulls straight down right to that knee. That level change has zero indicators and that DB has no time to react. So let's play this thing full speed one more time. Great example from Dotson of what to do at the top of the route to create separation when we drop my hips. So now, next example here we're going to show from this high school wide receiver. So many wide receivers on their breaks, they are extremely, extremely off balance and they lose explosion due to something called your foot strike. So this is something that we do not talk enough about on this channel in terms of our video breakdowns. So let's watch this wide receiver. He takes the outside release on a dig route. He gets his DB to flip his hips. He puts the brakes on, but he slips and that allows this DB to recover. So why does he slip on this? He did everything right too. He took the outside release when the DB was inside leverage. He got this DB to flip his hips to the fade. He's doing everything right. Selling vertical, good strike good speed, but I want you to watch what happens when he cuts. Look what part of his foot hits the ground first, his heel. So when your heel hits the ground, not only does that slap your toe down like this and put a ton of stress on your knee and on your Achilles, when your heel hits turf or especially grass, what is going to happen usually? You are going to skid because you have no traction and that skid right there, just that position alone grosses me out with his ankle and with his Achilles. But that slip right there, as you can see, allows this DB time to recover because we are off balance and we are wasting extra time. Now, is this something that he is thinking about in the moment? Absolutely not. And I think we all know that. He's definitely not thinking about his foot strike. This has been built up from bad habit after bad habit after bad. And I'm not trying to bag on this receiver either because like, I, like honestly, like there are so many receivers that do this. I'm saying this more like generally speaking. So many wide receivers have stack bad habit after bad habit after bad habit because they don't have anybody teaching them the right way. They don't have anybody teaching them in general, or maybe they just do a bunch of drills that are unrealistic. So many wide receivers do the cone drills where they set up, you you know, 84 cones back and forth and they run around the cones. They do a million different cuts and every single cut has bad form. And that bad form is going to translate to an actual full route. Everything you do has to be detail oriented from just a simple stick drill, cutting drill. The details matter because the details translate to the actual route. So fellas, when you're striking on that heel, that is going to be very bad for your balance, very bad for the sharpness of the cut and also puts pressure on your knee. Now, that type of break, right, where you got to drop your hips, everybody's biggest concern is, oh, well, I'm going to hurt myself, coach. I can't drop like that. I'm going to tear my ACL. I'm going to hurt my knee, et cetera. You will if you have bad form. But if you have good form, you're, you're going to be just fine. And you're going to get out of the break much smoother and with much more speed and less wasted time. So look at this example of Garrett Wilson here. Now, I know the video is talking about NFL wide receivers. Garrett Wilson is an NFL wide receiver. And this was film of him just at Ohio State. Because I think this is just too good of a clip to not show in this. So this is like the opposite. The last example was an outside release running a dig where the DB was inside shade. This is an inside release running an out route where the DB is outside shade. So you run it the exact Exact same way. You drop your hips at the break point to slip under the DB. So let's play this full speed and then let's talk about his foot strike, of course, right? So you see how smooth Wilson is in and out of this thing. No slip, no stumble. Everything about this was very, very smooth. So let's talk about what happens. You see when he goes to break, what part of the foot, because again, he's got the same stride, same body language, and same speed as the last wide receiver. So, but again, like the last two clips, one of these routes worked and one of these routes didn't. One receiver slipped and the other didn't. So watch what happens at the break point here when he drops. I want you to pay attention to where he strikes on the ground. Ball of the foot. His leg is not, his heel is not slapping his toe down. He's striking on the ball of his foot. That foot stays inside of his body frame. And then you see the second step. Where's it at? Ball of the foot. Third step. Where's it at? Ball of the foot. Everything stays within your frame. 
Guys, when you strike on your heel first, those cuts get outside of your frame because your weight is distributed on your heel, your feet get out in front of you, and that's where I slip and lose balance. So fellas, when you guys are making your cuts, if it's a speed cut, if it's a cut where you drop your hips, do not be on the heels. You will slip, you will skid, you will waste extra time because you do not have any explosion and you do not have any balance. Be violent with those hips, snap down, string pull like we talked about in the first example, but we've got to have the right foot strike. That will lead to many injuries, but also like, and again, if you don't believe me, look at Odell Beckham when he injured his knee in the Super Bowl. Look at how he cut heel toe. Right, And everybody likes to blame the turf. I get it. And I'm sure there's a lot of studies out there about how white turf is bad and how turf causes injuries, etc. Guys, you're going to slip on grass too, probably even more so if you have an incorrect foot placement. Like, like you ever try to cut on wet grass and your heel hits the grass? You are going to slip like crazy. And most of you are high school wide receivers. So what time of the day do you play? You play at night, right? So the grass is going to be a little slippery. So you could use the, the turf excuse all you want. Improper form is going to cause you to slip and waste extra time no matter what playing surface you are on. Let's play this again full speed one more time. So again, great example of staying on the ball of your foot for balance and explosion out of the cut. So now, one of the things that so many NFL wide receivers have a leg up on as, as opposed to younger wide receivers is the details, right? The details of their routes. First two examples, those were details, right? Him raising up at the break point. NFL wide receivers don't do that. They don't pop their chest up in the air and then snap down. Second example, breaking on the heels. That's a detail. Now, another detail is selling a double move with every aspect of your body. So by body, I mean like your speed, your stride, your body language, and your eyes. So let's watch what this wide receiver does. He does a great release off the line, gets this DB off balance, breaks to the post here, then breaks to the corner, but the DB's all over it. DB wasn't buying the post. He did not commit to the post for one second. Because when this wide receiver broke to the post here, I want you to pay attention. He's running hard. He's got good stride. His hips and his shoulders are committed, but look where his eyes are. Eyes are going straight forward. DB is not buying that this is a post because now he knows that he's not catching a post. If your eyes are looking straight forward and you're not looking back to the quarterback, that little minor detail, a talented DB is going to pick up on that and will not bite especially if it is off coverage. I feel like it's easier to get a DB to bite and press coverage on a double move. Imagine it being off coverage and you're trying to get him to bite on a post so you could slip under on a corner. You got to sell with your eyes. You have to sell with your body and you have to sell with your speed. And if you don't have all those three things, that DB will play it. If he's disciplined, and at the, obviously the NFL level, there are very, very disciplined DBs out there, whether you like it or not. Whether you, And again, a lot of people talk a lot of trash on DBs saying that guy can't cover, that guy can't do this. If that guy came out to a regular off-season workout, I don't care where, what state it's in, I don't care how old you are, if it's anybody who's not in the NFL, he's going to make every single wide receiver look absolutely foolish out there. So you got to understand, he's playing at the highest possible level for a reason. So let's compare that post corner to this post corner from Devontae Adams. So let's watch what he does here. So he breaks, obviously, to the post. Eyes, body, and speed all commit to this thing. And that got that DB to crash in zone, which is harder than man coverage. So you might say, oh, well, this is a different coverage than the last one. Yeah, it is. And it's a tougher coverage to get separation on. So when he breaks to the post here, I want you to watch the first thing that comes around. His eyes snap to the quarterback. Again, Hips, shoulders, he's actually gaining ground with his stride. He's actually running hard. All of those things get that DB to think post, and that is what can separate us back over the top. It's about the details, fellas. There is no such thing as a little thing when it comes to route running, and it is very, very rare that you see pro wide receivers make the exact same mistakes that high school wide receivers are making because they know. They understand that that little margin for error is so small when you are going against this caliber of a DB. So let's play this again full speed one more time. Great job by Adam selling with the eyes, committing the hips and shoulders, and running hard to sell that post. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like a full eight-week wide receiver um, field and gym workout schedule, everything that wide receivers need to do broken down with sets and reps, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you on that. I'll see you guys next time.